Listen, we had to make it a day three because, listen, the guest list today, Puka Nakua is joining the show. Fantasy football royalty, Puka and Nakua. Peacocky winner. Peacocky winner, Puka Nakua. We're going to get his thoughts ex- on winning a Peacocky. Fi- finally ask him for his acceptance speech. Yes. <laughs> and the best part is he's opening up for Lawrence Jackson to join the show there as well. You go. So after Puka, Lawrence Jackson will be on the show. We will talk DFS plays of the weekend. But as we do, let's get into the Roto World headlines. For all your Roto World headlines, go to NBCSports.com. And we'll start with... Uh, obviously, we've heard from the Niners and the Chiefs throughout this week here at Super Bowl. And Andy Reid on possible retirement saying today's not the day, although our Matthew Berry had a very different bold prediction. Let's yeah. take a listen from earlier in the week. Here's a bold prediction that I have no inside information at all, but crazy bold prediction. Chiefs win. Andy Reid retires, and the Chiefs announce Bill Belichick as their new head coach. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Wow. Okay. <laughs> All right. He's a free agent. He knows how to co- he knows how to coach a superstar quarterback. I have no inside information. That is my bold prediction. <laughs> okay. Chiefs win. Andy Reid retires, and they hire Belichick. So Reid's full quote was, "Am I retiring? Listen, my mom and dad told me this when they were working. They said you'll know when it's time, and I'm ready to go right now. Let's go." Well, he's got a Super Bowl to coach. Yes, yeah. <laughs> it matters. But you know what? If they win it, that might be time. He might know I just, it's time. I just, I just won two in a row. You know, why not go out, you know, with a confetti behind me right off into the sunset as a big champion? Um, I, I, had, I had not heard that before, like my bold take, but I, I posted it on social media, and I've had people say, like, other people have said that, so I, which I had not heard, so maybe it's out there. I don't know. Or maybe somebody else has also had that bold take, but I just, I just want to say, like, I usually, like, I'm always happy to give credit when I'm like, oh, you know, somebody else had this one. I didn't hear from anyone. So yep. maybe great minds or stupid minds think alike. Yeah. I like that. This is your new bit of uh, predi- pushing legends into retirement. Last year is Matthew Stafford. Yes. This yes. year is Andy, Andy Reid and Travis Kelsey. Right. Yes. <laughs> Who will be next? Uh, we'll see. Uh, so I'm <laughs> over <for> one. Yeah. <laughs> over one. We'll see. Probably next over year, three. We'll start Dak Prescott retirement yeah. rumors. Yeah. 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 Mike McCarthy. Yeah, That's time. You're yeah. the greatest yeah. ever. Yeah. We'll yeah. Do it. Here's hoping. All Here's right. hoping. But anyway, we'll see. We'll see. I'm not expect. I mean, we, listen, we had Peter King on yesterday's show. He's a legend, Peter King. No one's more plugged in than Peter. And he just said, we asked him his opinion. He just said, Andy Reid's not retiring. Yeah. He also said that he wouldn't be surprised if Belichick did go to Kansas City if that role became vacant. So, uh, yeah, one for two. To be yeah. fair, who would say no to that job? <laughs> <Yeah>. Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, no, I'm, of course. I would take it. But, yeah. I mean, like, what's interesting is, like, when I posted the thing on, on social media, all these people are like, no, nah, it's going to be Beanie, 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 and I'm like, I don't know who it's going to be. It ain't going to be Beanie. No, I wouldn't it, expect that. To no, be the case. I, they, you know, I don't, I don't know where Eric Beanie is going to coach next year, but I feel fairly confident that it won't be Kansas City. Oh, great. Speaking of the Chiefs uh, here, Matthew, this will make you happy. Patrick Mahomes commented on the Cliff Kingsbury hire as the Commanders' offensive coordinator oh. and had some glowing praise. Take a listen to what Mahomes had to say about the hire. Yeah, just a great, a great person, man. Um, someone that truly loves the game of football, works his tail off every single day, um, and uh, gets the best out of his guys, um, especially his quarterbacks. And so uh, I'm excited for him to have another opportunity in the NFL. Um, I thought he did a great job in Arizona, for, um, especially with the offense. And so I think he'll do a great job in, uh, in Washington uh, uh, getting that offense going. I mean, he always believed in me from the beginning, even when I wasn't getting a lot of offers um, coming out of high school. Um, and then when I got there, he, he evolved the offense to, to really fit my game. And I think that's what you have to do as a great offense coordinator in this league is you have to evolve the offense to fit the guys that you have. And he, I think he's done that everywhere he's been. All right. Thank you, Patrick Mahomes. I will uh, – I'll take that. Maybe Cliff Kingsbury next Chiefs coach. Yeah, yeah, well, or maybe Patrick Mahomes next commander's quarterback. <laughs> that's what yeah, I took that, away. That's what I, that's what I heard. You know, you always hear what you want to hear. That, But what I heard from that clip was Patrick Mahomes saying, like, as soon as I can get out of Kansas City, yeah. I'm going to go to Washington to play for Cliff Kingsbury. Who wouldn't? It's yeah, a great of course. situation. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Andy Reid's going to retire, yeah. right, you know, and everything like that. And then Patrick's like, you know, I've done it here in Kansas City. Yeah. Now I need to go with my guy, yep. Cliff Kingsbury. Yep. You know, sort of like LeBron. You know, LeBron wanted to go back to Cleveland to, you know, win a title for the Cavs after he got the title in Miami. So I could see this. I wants to win a title for Cliff Kingsbury. Yep. No, very similar. Um, very <laughs> much like uh, LeBron called his time in Miami like going to college. 
I would liken it to the same thing here. Patrick Mahomes' time in Kansas City as college for uh, for the big dance of the Washington Commanders. Exactly. Yeah, like there it. you go. Very excited to welcome Patrick Mahomes <laughs> to uh, our nation's capital. Can you there imagine how unsufferable you would be if you had a quarterback as good as Patrick Mahomes? I uh, know, but I'm going to spend the next, uh, after hearing that quote, I might spend the next uh, part of the show just thinking about that. Yeah, put it but in yes, the I would be I would be unbelievable. Un- I mean, you're talking about somebody who, who brought up Sam Howell yes. at nauseum. Yes. yes. <laughs> imagine yeah, if we had... <laughs> no. Right. Yeah. We're talking about Mike Collingwood Magpies references. The amount of time we devoted to the great Sam Howell this year. It's unbelievable. But yeah. uh but yeah. They would cancel the NBC would cancel the show. Yeah. Is what would happen. Yeah, Rich Gannon very high on to. Sam Howell though. It's good. Rich, Maybe G- Rich Gannon was right. very, he fueled former, the flame for you again. You were already a, out. You yeah. were like, we're drafting a quarterback, <laughs> you know, I want to see Howell get a fresh start somewhere. Rich Gannon stops by the set, he has nothing but praise for Sam Howell, and you were like just when I thought I was out. <laughs> yeah. I'm, they they get they, me back they in. They pulled me back I, in. Listen, I don't know if Sam Howell's going to stay in Washington or not. I like the kid. I do, I'm rooting for that. I'm going to root for Sam Howell wherever he plays. Like, I think he's a gutty kid that like played well this year under very tough circumstances. All right, and more coaching news. Ian Rappaport reports the Chargers are officially hiring Greg Roman as their offensive coordinator. <laughs> Jesse Minter was also announced as the Chargers' new defensive coordinator who spent two seasons as Michigan's D.C. under Jim Harbaugh. So Matthew Harbaugh's staff starting to take shape in the NFL. Right. So Roman was the offensive coordinator for the 49ers when Jim Harbaugh was the head coach. And uh, under Greg Roman in 2011 to 2014, San Francisco had the second highest rush rate in the NFL. They were one of only two teams to run the ball 50% of the time. Then, of course, he spent two years as the offense coordinator of the Bills, and under Greg Roman, Buffalo had the highest rush rate in the NFL from 2015 to 2016. And then, of course, he went to Baltimore, where he was the offense coordinator of the Ravens from 2019 to 2022. And during that time period, the Ravens had the most rush attempts in the NFL. Of course, Lamar Jackson accounted for a large part of it, but they were the only team to have a rush rate over 50%. You see it there on your screen. I think, I think the point of all this is I think the Chargers are going to run next year. Yeah. I think the Chargers are going to run next year. And so Austin Eckler, we don't know what his future is going to be. You know, we'll ask him this week. Yeah. We, we friend, a friend of the show, friend of fantasy, fantasy life investor, Austin Eckler will be joining the show later this week. So excited to get his thoughts on that. But the other thing I would say here is, is that all of a sudden, when we, you know, we talked at the beginning of the week of all the free agent running backs, like, Tony Pollard lands there, Derrick Henry, like some of these guys like suddenly become really interesting. Whoever the starting running back is for the Chargers next year is going to be fantasy friendly. And I have one other thought here for you guys. Justin Herbert. I know you're like, oh, great, Justin Herbert. He's going to a coach that's just going to run the hell out of the ball. But think about all the quarterbacks under Greg Roman, like started with Alex Smith, moved to Colin Kaepernick, then Tyrod Taylor in Buffalo, then obviously Lamar Jackson, all of them very mobile, all of them designed runs. Justin Herbert's not one of those guys, but he is pretty mobile. Like, he's, he is somebody that I think you could utilize a lot more in the run game yes. with the right coordinator, and I think that's, you know, that's Greg Roman. I think at the goal line is what I would think. I, I would want to see Herbert, you know, maybe punch in six to eight rushing touchdowns yeah. with some creative play calls, and obviously you hinted at this, Matthew, and I'll throw it to you, Jay. I think whoever the Chargers running back is is one of the most interesting fantasy questions we have going into this offseason because of everything you said about Roman. Yeah, and I think, look, this year the Chargers uh, by EPA, they had the worst rushing offense in the NFL, and they were 30th in rushing success rate as well. So it was just the disaster. Herbert's never really had an amazing running game, I think, to take pressure off of him. But, I mean, this is a guy from a fantasy perspective. I mean, well, two years ago he finished his QB2 in fantasy. Yeah. Like, he is a guy who has the upside where... Uh, there, like there aren't that many guys with this upside, but he could absolutely be the number one quarterback in fantasy next year. If you get some design runs, again, obviously a very different player, but could you see him have a fantasy season like Russell Wilson at his peak? Which is, I mean, like Russell Wilson, again, use his mobility as well. Right. Like he's not Lamar Jackson, or Josh Allen or whatever, but, he, you know, you got points from his legs and he was so highly efficient that it didn't matter that they were more run heavy, you know, under Pete Carroll when he was there. Like, like, I, I don't know that Justin Herbert is somebody that, again, if that team's working right and they play great defense, which you would expect that to be under Harbaugh, Harbaugh like, they don't, he doesn't need to throw the ball 45, 50 right. times a game to have a productive fantasy you know, game. What he'll do is he'll throw the ball down the field off of play action because you right. actually finally have a threat of the run. So the efficiency of the throwing is what matters and is more important where – I totally see what you're saying. And that's what, I, that's what happened with Russell Wilson in, in Seattle. He's a great yeah. deep ball thrower, yes. a very effective one, where people are going to be like, oh, Greg Roman offense, Jim Harbaugh head coach, uh, Herbert, you know, not a top five to six fantasy quarterback. And 
it could go the complete other way because of that. Yep. What do you think of the Chargers' offensive line? I think, obviously, you have a great piece in Rashawn Slater, and then you have a lot of question marks, especially along the interior. And it makes you – everybody's wondering what they do with the fifth overall pick because a lot of people believe they'll get a pass catcher, whether it's Brock Bowers or one of the top wide receivers. But you can make the argument that they could take a top tackle and have two bookends at tackle that they run out there for the next eight years and feel good about that. It's gonna What the new staff thinks of Quentin Johnson – and how they handle the cap with Mike Williams and Keenan Allen will really dictate what they do at number five and what the offense looks like. Yep. It's not a great running back uh, draft class this year, no. but could could the Chargers find their solution to running back in the draft, you think? I mean, think of... Could Harbaugh go back to... Who, I mean, think of who Harbaugh knows, Blake Corum. Right, that's what I was going to ask. 100%. Yeah. It makes right. sense, and he's probably a late second round, third round pick. And then he'd get the ball 22 times a game because it's Jim Harbaugh with his guy. Yeah. So we're all painting the picture together here of the Chargers offense that could be really, really exciting. All right, want another sweat during Super Bowl week? Jay and Drew Dinzik have you covered with a special edition of Bet the Edge tomorrow night. Join the guys on our NFL on NBC YouTube channel at 9 p.m. Eastern for an NFL Awards watch along and find out how they feel about the winners for Coach of the Year, Comeback Player, and much more. Stick with us here. We're going to break, but we got a big guest on deck Rookie sensation, pass catching phenom, and of course, peacocky winner Puka Nakua joins us next. Hey, it's Matthew Berry from NBCSports.com and RotorWorld.com, and I want to thank you so much for watching whatever it is you just watched, or if nothing else, being too lazy to click out of the autoplay after this video started, after whatever it is you actually wanted to watch finished. But now that you're here, I'd like to take a moment here to ask you respectfully respectfully now, okay? I'm asking you respectfully to subscribe to the NFL on NBC YouTube channel. You'll get the latest Roto World fantasy news headlines, all sorts of great shows, including my own fantasy football happy hour. So go subscribe now. Again, I'm asking respectfully.